So this morning I was having my normal cup of coffee and I was doing some reading and I stumbled upon this article in the Harvard Business Review that was titled, Why You're So Anxious About Going Back to the Office. Now, I normally wouldn't do a video on an article like this, but this article really resonated with me. It resonated with me because a lot of people that I know have talked about this exact same thing. On this channel, we typically talk about all things investing, emerging technologies, and emerging trends in the business world. I mean, we talk about personal finance, business trends, retirement planning, cryptocurrency, and we typically talk about stocks and ETFs that you should consider investing in. But today, I wanna switch things up a little bit and talk about something more related to our professional lives. More specifically, I wanna talk about the anxiety that you might be feeling to go back to work or go back to a typical office setting. Over the past year or so, our lives have changed dramatically. We went from a world where we commuted to work every day, conducted face-to-face -face meetings every day, to a world that went completely remote and completely digital. At first, it felt odd, but as processes streamlined and we got more comfortable and efficient working from home, it began to feel like normal. Things are going back to normal, but what used to be normal isn't normal any longer, and it feels like a big change, and these changes are causing a lot of anxiety. Now, seeing all of your work colleagues in person after more than a year apart can feel overwhelming, and with the COVID landscape still in flux, it's hard to feel at ease about how long this return to normal will last, and whether or not this return to normal is safe. Well, this article in the Harvard Business Review shared four valuable insights that I wanna share with you all that will help your re-entry back to normal office life. But before I get into them, if you could do me a quick favor and hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. The first insight that I wanna share is that it is completely normal for transitions to spike our anxiety levels. Now, according to this article, a lot of human psychology has an evolutionary basis. So familiar situations tend to be safer and more predictable. Familiar situations allow us to put our guard down. Now on the flip side, in unfamiliar situations, we're wired to be more on edge and constantly looking out for dangers. Just think about the first couple of weeks or the first few months after you started a new job. For many of us, it can be stressful to get acquainted with new colleagues and get familiar with new processes and procedures. Now the same can be said for our academic lives. Now anytime you start a new grade or go to a new school or start college, we always feel a sense of anxiety and we naturally look for dangers around us. Now we know that we will eventually adapt to our surroundings, but getting to that level of comfort can feel quite exhausting. Look, we will eventually get comfortable with our surroundings, but it can take some time and feel quite uncomfortable until we get there. Now for some of us, this could be a matter of days and for others, it could be a matter of months. The fact is that we might be returning to the same job, but there is no denying that a lot has changed. So even though we are returning to the same job or the same school, it's important to give yourself the same grace and compassion as if you were starting a brand new job or going to a brand new school. Trust me, you're not the only person feeling anxious, so the solution to this problem is give yourself some time to adjust to the new normal. Insight number two is that whenever we've avoided something, we'll feel anxious about returning to it. Now the article talks about a gymnast who has been out for several months with an injury, but I'm gonna talk about athletes in general. See, when you're competing in sports, injuries happen. And when injuries happen, you are not allowed to train or participate in practice for a given period of time. Let's use Paul George as an example. Now he's one of my favorite basketball players and he broke his leg during a Team USA scrimmage back in 2014. He missed over a year of basketball after that injury and many people speculated that he would never be back to the world-class player that he once was. But now Paul George is back to his normal self and he's arguably better than ever. But to assume that he didn't have anxiety about performing the moves that he regularly performed prior to his injury is ludicrous. He has talked about his injury in podcasts and in interviews about how he would second guess himself and not play as hard as he could to prevent the same injury from happening again. But the only solution to this anxiousness is to gradually get back into your previous activities and your built up anxiety will naturally subside. So to all of you watching, find your inner Paul George and gradually get back to the level of comfort that you were once at. Insight number three is that social relationships and boundaries have changed. Now before the pandemic, you probably knew your work colleagues, 
but did you really know your work colleagues? With the pandemic, I'm sure that you are more interested in their health decisions than ever before. For one, if you're like me, you probably wanna know who in the office is vaccinated and who isn't. This HBR article talks about how some coworkers will likely become office influencers. They'll lead the office culture and norms in terms of how many COVID precautions are kept up and how vigilantly they are maintained. Now, there is no doubt that some people will be ostracized for their decisions. But the fact is that some people just don't want to be vaccinated or they just aren't there yet. They will probably continue to keep masking when the majority of people want to take their masks off for good. So regardless of what side of the fence you're on, just remember that everybody has a choice and just because you choose to do something doesn't mean that others necessarily need to do the same thing. Similarly, some coworkers may be thrilled to get back to the office because they love the social aspect of it or because they find it helps their productivity, but many other people may feel the complete opposite. Some people might find that their productivity is better at home. Some people may hate the fact that they have to restart commuting to and from work every single day. And some people may have anxiety about the new COVID strains that are popping up around the world. So the solution to all of this is tolerance, acceptance, and refraining from gossip. Look, everybody has their own story and everybody has their own views and those stories and views should be respected. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else should or will. The fourth insight that was discussed in this article is to be intentional about retaining the best parts of working from home and working from the office. Now this article talks about how working from home was sort of a big experiment. If nothing else, you probably learned some things about yourself that you didn't know before. You might have learned about what helps your productivity and what hurts your productivity. You may have learned about what makes you feel happy and what doesn't make you feel happy. Some of these learnings may have been practical and others may have been social. Now an example of a practical insight is that you learned that you really need two huge monitors to be productive at home like you are in the office. Or you might have found that when you work from home, you eat healthier and you have healthier habits. Or instead of eating an unhealthy lunch with colleagues, you found that when you work from home, you actually go to the gym at lunchtime. And some of these insights into yourself may have been social. So did you develop new strategies for getting arduous and deep work done? Did you manage interruptions differently when you're working from home? Did you develop more efficient ways of communicating? What did you miss about seeing your coworkers in person? And what did you miss about not going to conventions or doing business travel? The point is that you may have developed solid habits while you are working from home, which you will need to retain when you go back to the office. And in order to do that, you'll need to establish these habits from day one. Otherwise, you'll just fall back to the way things were before the pandemic. Now, that's not to say that things were bad before the pandemic. I'm just saying that we learned a lot more about ourselves during the pandemic. So let's take what we learned about ourselves and offer the world a better version of ourselves when we go back to the office. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we will call it a video. I made this video because it just feels really relevant. We are living in a time of uncertainty and in a time of a lot of unanswered questions. So hopefully this video provided you all with some valuable information. And if you want to read the article, I will leave a link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you all next time.